Good evening, my name is Corey Hay, and tonight I'm privileged and proud to present one of America's great folk heroes. They combined art and sect with, with great taste, and uh, it's really great to be with Hugh Hefner. Thank you. One of America's great folk heroes. So, what brings you to New York uh, specifically this time, I guess, is the show at the Cultural Center, which um, includes all the art that uh, Playboy has commissioned during the past year. Is that well, that's the secondary reason. The real reason is... Uh, Barbie's show. Who just opened at the Playboy Club uh, a week ago. Barbie, you want to come on in, sir? Barbie Benton, the, the beautiful... Uh, what, what kind of adjective shall I use to describe Barbie's position in your life? Girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. Girlfriend. As a matter of fact, we just uh, uh, celebrated our sixth anniversary uh, a couple of nights ago, Wednesday night. What keeps you from taking that final step of... Uh... Well, we're in favor of romance. Romance and marriage aren't always, uh, you know, don't always go hand in hand. But, uh, you know, that may, that may come eventually. Right now, she's uh, busy in the launching of a new career. Seeing country and western, doing very well at it. And, uh, and besides, you know, we've watched all our friends get married and divorced since <laughs> yes, we've been we've together. We've lasted longer than any of our friends, married so. or uh, otherwise. Yeah. So we're very happy together. Do you exclusively sing at the uh, Playboy clubs? No, I sing wherever anybody pays me the money that my manager asks for. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's the Playboy club. I try to do the Playboy club whenever I'm in a city where there is one. Out of, no, out but of she's. She's worked at the Palomino, which is the, the top country western place in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, the Hacienda in Las Vegas. And we'll I'll be, be working the Hyatt House in uh, Chicago. In Chicago, and the World's Fair with Merle Haggard in September. The football game. The football game in Atlanta, right? She's going to be singing the Star Spangled Banner. That's right. <laughs> I noticed you're brushing up on the words a little before. <laughs> well, nobody knows the second verse. Most people don't even know that there is one. Well, we don't want a Robert Goulet here. <laughs> Robert exactly, Goulet. Now I remember that, right. I'm going to be going to catch the act tonight, and would you describe what you're seeing as country rock, sort of like, are you a fan of Waylon exactly Jennings? It is. Right. Um, Waylon Jennings is even more country than I am. I would say that if you're familiar with country western artists, I'm more like Linda Ronstadt, or a newcomer named Olivia Newton-John. But I have my own style, and most of my songs are very original. <laughs> They're written by a Playboy cartoonist named Shel Silverstein. And uh, he's, he wrote A Boy Named Sue and quite a few other songs that you might recognize, like Cover the Rolling Stone. Um, he's very talented, and he does quite a bit of my material. I assume you approve of her going out on her own and uh, having a career, and you don't want her back in the mansion in the kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen? She never was in the kitchen. <laughs> no, we have people to take care of that. No, I'm very proud of her. That's good. I was also proud of you yesterday when I asked you how you felt about the current political situation, and you sort of said that uh, you were delighted. You wished it had happened six years sooner. Yes, I think that, uh, you know, there was, uh, I think, uh, mixed emotions at what the country has gone through and, and uh, you know, a certain sadness in terms of, of what's happened. But I, I don't think that, uh, that Nixon did very much for us. And I think he was very good in some international uh, moves that the country made, but I think he was a disaster for us domestically. And I think it's very important for the country to get back on the right track in terms of what supposedly uh, Nixon was going to do, bringing us together. That's what it ought to be all about. And of course, what he really did was just split the country wide apart. Last night, I think we all had pretty much the feeling that he was asking us to sort of, uh, to go, to forget it. Now he's quit, it's over. What do you feel? Do you feel that we should grant him amnesty the way he denied it to the uh, Vietnam deserters? Or do you think he should be pursued? What do you think the, uh, the penalties should be demanded? Do you think? He's suffered enough. It's a very difficult question to answer. The thought of uh, a previous president of the United States actually serving time in prison is uh, is a very sad and depressing one. At the same time, you know, the basic concepts of uh, America are that no man, including the president, is above the law. I mean, he he wasn't the king, although sometimes it seemed as though he he felt he was. We don't live in a monarchy, uh, and it would be rather curious and sad to uh, to the see well, well but it would be also sad to see uh, uh, or rather unfair to see all of the men who worked for him many of whom uh, are guilty most of uh, of improperly placed loyalty to nixon serving prison sentences while he got uh, got off scot-free and at the moment also is uh, is getting away with uh, 
a $60,000 a year uh, uh, salary for life and uh, 96000 96, and uh, 20,000 for Pat after he's gone. Yes, and, yes. Uh, it, it, uh, it seems like, uh, you know, because after all, the man is a self-confessed felon. I don't think they're going to repossess San Clemente or they haven't brought it up yet. No, no. But I do think you ought to pay the taxes. I thought he had paid the taxes. He's in the process of settling the taxes here. He also spoke of, you know, take, taking on some sort of position in uh, serving the country further. I wasn't quite sure what he alluded to in that manner in terms of, I guess, speaking. What and, we've uh, seen so far would suggests that uh, the more private a private citizen he is, the better it will be for the country. Do, do you think, <laughs> do you think that, um, that pre do you have a lot of uh, faith in President Ford? Are you looking forward to his? No, I wouldn't say so. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm an independent, but I would say that, uh, generally speaking, my, my feelings in terms of domestic policies are far more related to, uh, to uh, the Democrats and, you know, how they view the solution to some of our problems. And I think that uh, the, the major problem with the Republican Party, we, you know, I've become very involved uh, both in the magazine and also in, with financial help uh, in the last few years in, in uh, the political arena, both uh, national and, uh, and local. And I do back some uh, Republicans, but by and large, I really think that you know the Republican attitude that the that the society just kind of takes care of itself is something that I don't agree with. I think that we have a lot of serious problems in in uh, this country and in poverty and racism and ecology and the rest. And I don't think these things take care of themselves. I think it requires a you know a government posture. Democrats themselves felt that Nixon leaving office was actually going to hinder them as far as 1976 goes. How do you feel about that, and who would you like to see uh, running against? I would assume it'll be President Ford. On a purely, no, that's two questions. On the on the purely political level, there is some case to be made for the fact that uh, having had the the final culmination of Watergate with the impeachment coming closer to the election probably uh, would have helped the Democrats, but I think it would have probably hurt the country. There is a problem in terms of the fact that, uh, from a Democratic point of view, the, uh, or Democrats' point of view, that uh, Ford will have a year and a half, you know, as an incumbent, and if uh, anything is apt to look pretty good after what we've been through, so if he, if he just doesn't screw it up too much, uh, he will you know, have a pretty good position to work from. Uh, at this point, in terms of a Democratic candidate, I think probably uh, Kennedy is, is the best bet, but there's still a year and a half to go, so somebody else may come along. And Vice President, who do you think they're going to, Mr. Ford, do you have any idea of who he'll choose? No, I don't. Uh, uh, I'm just watching the news, uh, and, uh, you know, Rockefeller has been put forward, but he's not very acceptable to the... Uh, 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 to the uh, conservatives, uh, they were suggesting today, the conservatives apparently uh, had a caucus and were suggesting Goldwater. Uh, Laird is going to be a significant power. He's been talked about as possible vice president, but whether he takes that position or not, uh, his long-term relationship with uh, uh, now President Ford would suggest that he will have you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, importance in the picture, official or unofficial. Have you been any interest at all in entering politics in a more direct fashion, maybe making Barbie first lady? No interest, no. no. Now, Hef I, Hef has once mentioned that presidency is a step down from being Hugh Hefner. No, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> say that, but Mort Saul said it once. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I don't think that I would be able to um, or want to accept the kind of lifestyle that would go with... Uh, there's so much with responsibility. Running, running with office. But I am very concerned with the social problems and, uh, and therefore, in that sense, I'm very involved in the political process. And at the same time, as a public figure and having a great deal of notoriety, there are bodyguards out front and uh, for security reasons, I had to tell them exactly how many people I was bringing and I know that uh, you travel with a lot of security. Have there been threats? Oh, sure, there are from time to time. And, uh, you know, the Hearst business here uh, early in the year made us, uh, you know, Additionally concerned about the immediate family and Barbie. Your daughter, of course, as well, has constant protection. Yeah, I mean, we live in a very troubled time, and the uh, troubling times, and they're troubling for uh, people in the public eye and for the common citizen as well. Is it true you're replacing all bunnies in the club over 20? No, there's no, there is, as a matter of fact, no correlation between age and uh, uh, and being a bunny at all. Uh, there is, however, something called bunny image. We do pick the girls on the basis of their attractiveness. And their personality, and attractiveness uh, does 
begin to change with age, so that's the only consideration. Are there tenure problems, or how do you approach the retirement of a bunny? <laughs> Did you see <laughs> jokes about having a bunny farm for, for uh, aged yeah. bunnies. We're trying to develop a, a system as the company grows for using other uh, uh, girls who, you know, who begin as bunnies uh, in other kinds of, of work. And we do have a, an increasing number of our floor directors and room directors in the clubs are uh, women, in most cases, ex-bunnies. At this point in your life, would you say you had any unfulfilled dreams? No major ones, no. Just very... Um, Grateful for the first 20 years of uh, Playboy success and looking forward to the next 20. Will you, would you ever, or will your daughter be appearing in Playboy? She's very beautiful and uh, definitely meets the Playboy image of uh, spectacular... Uh... I'm sure she will be appearing in Playboy, but quite probably as a writer rather than as a, uh, as a model. But if she wanted to appear, I'd be happy to, to have her there. Under any circumstances, would you yourself appear nude in your magazine? <laughs> it's conceivable. I just pose for a... We're doing a story on the Playboy Mansion in, uh, in our January issue, and I was in a uh, jacuzzi shooting here a few days ago, in which I was unadorned. I don't think that probably it'll all be hanging out, but, uh, but uh, I have nothing against it. I'm not quite in the shape that I was uh, 20 years ago, but uh, get along pretty good. Besides your normal business activities, are there any sports you're fond of? What do you do to keep in shape? Well, we have a tennis court uh, on the grounds in L.A., and uh, getting into tennis a little bit, and we play a little volleyball and, and uh, croquet there. Uh, but I confess to be more of an indoor guy by, by nature and bent, so uh, it's usually more apt to be uh, a little arm practice, uh, shaking the dice for backgammon. Yeah. Monopoly with real money, I understand. Monopoly, yeah. but not with real money. We have a very elaborate monopoly uh, set that uh, kind of come together over a period of time through gifts and friends, etc., where we have money that has uh, uh, Your face uh, yeah, the <laughs> my, my image in place of George Washington uh, and the, uh, the, the Playboy Mansion, Playboy Mansion West on the back of it that was a gift from a friend and, and little pieces that are duplicates of the players, but uh, not real money. Do you always win oh, at Monopoly? Good. At everything? No. no. Yeah. Nobody always wins at everything. Do the girls do, Barbie, do you, uh, do you let him win sometimes, or is there kind of a... I think there was a period when we were playing backgammon when we were both learning how to play backgammon where I think I was a little better, and he has a little bit of a temper, and if I would beat him too many times in a row, I did give in once. But he's much better than I am, so I don't ever have to do that anymore. I have to say, in addition to that, that that's completely inconsistent. One of the things that's very charming I about am, Barbie yeah. is she's very competitive in games, but not in life. I am very competitive. However, that you did have, you do have this thing about you that if I I'm very competitive to beat too. You, like, if we were playing tennis and I beat you every day, you wouldn't play with me anymore. How do you know that? I think the trick is, first of all, to get to a point where you can beat me every day, then we'll see if I'll play every day. <laughs> you could change to mixed doubles and uh, play in the same team. Yes, Absolutely. that's true. But when I'm not as good as you, you don't let me play. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You haven't been home. Uh. Yeah. So you preferred oral or genital sex? Do I prefer oral or genital sex? I think there's plenty of room for both. Uh, this is a very interesting TV show you have going in. <laughs> I used, are you distressed at all by the hero worshipping of the effete bisexual rock stars by the young? No, I, not at all. I don't think that... Uh, I think it's all a part of a campy thing that's, uh, that's kind of fun. I, I, I seriously doubt that, it, uh, that one's uh, sexual predilections are, uh, are uh, rooted in, in, uh, in that kind of thing. No, not at all. I think, as a matter of fact, we have uh, in the past traditionally too many sexual hang-ups. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the problems in terms of bisexuality are, are among them. Do you think it's a problem or...? Uh, Do I think what's a problem? Bisexuality, do you think this is an advance or...? A I think uh, it's a problem. Decadence, or? I don't think it's decadence. I think that uh, we're all by nature bisexual. I think we have a lot of hang-ups in that area. But we have, ha we have hang-ups in all areas of sexuality. Part of the whole women's liberation movement, of course, has involved a great deal of, of lesbian tendencies among some of the women who appear in magazines. Would you depict that at all in Playboy? Other magazines have depicted girls kissing and caressing in a very... Playboy's been showing oh, yeah. it a lot lately, too. Yeah, sure, I don't have anything. I, I, you have to remember, among other things, that uh, that uh, uh, lesbianism in uh, is and has all been uh, throughout uh, 
history a thing that is heterosexually erotic to the male, so there's never been any conflict there. In, in terms of the women's lib movement, I think the only part of lesbianism that's unfortunate is the, the part that's anti-male. I think you have to make a distinction between lesbianism and bisexuality. In other words, the, the compulsive homosexual, uh, a com compulsive homosexuality, I think, is an emotional problem uh, because it's, uh, uh, you know, psychologically the inability to really uh, cope with psychologically and sexually, uh, you know, the opposite sex, and that's the sadness. But, you know, so are the hang-ups that we have in terms of, uh, you know, greater sexual experimentation, so. I think you have to make a distinction between compulsive homosexuality and bisexuality. How do you feel yourself? Have you ever engaged in any kind of bisexual behavior? No, but if I haven't, it's because that's the kind of society I've been raised in. Makes sense. What about you, Barbie? No, I haven't either. <laughs> Doesn't mean to say that he wouldn't like me to be. <laughs> <laughs> What? No. <laughs> no, I think that men generally have this fantasy that they would enjoy seeing another woman enjoy another woman. You know, I mean, uh, men tend to like pictures of girls kissing each other. But um, I... Didn't I know that. <laughs> I'm not into it. I noticed in New York that it seems to be very chic. Well, bisexuality chic is a new phenomenon in New York. I see girls walking around hand in hand, arm in arm, you know, and kissing, you know, and with, you know, it's not well, very bad, but and, I would put it down. And indeed, uh, bisexuality in women has, uh, has traditionally been less a problem for society, for our society, than bisexuality in men. And again, that's, you know, obviously just a cultural thing. and. Uh, I'm afraid it's really rooted in the fact that, uh, you know, that over the centuries, women have had a very second-class kind of position, so what they did didn't really make that much difference. It was kind of like the old, the old uh, ghetto concept of, you know, whatever was happening in, the, in uh, the black part of town or the poor part of town or Chinatown didn't really matter as long as it, it stayed there. The, same, the reason that traditionally, through the centuries, male homosexuality has been a far greater taboo than, a, than female homosexuality is because through the century, sadly, women have not been important. How do you think we're ready for a vice president to be a woman, or indeed sure, a president? I think, so. I think so. I haven't heard it considered at all by the president for it, but I think it might be a, a well, wise choice. I don't think that he may be ready for it, but I do think that the country probably is. Do you Gordon Beer's done a pretty good job in Israel. Indira Gandhi as well. How do you feel about groupies? You must have a lot of groupies uh, around you. He doesn't go well, out. <laughs> Sometimes groupies come in. Uh, well, I think that it depends. I think you have to consider uh, any of these phenomena in terms of the individuals and, uh, uh, you know, whether it's a rock star, a film star, or whatever it is, uh, a certain amount of adoration and fandom is, is charming if it becomes a, you know, a, a way of life for the person, um, you know, for the member of a, a groupie band, then it can be kind of sad because it, uh, you know, it becomes kind of a compulsive thing with, uh, with uh, a limitation then in terms of them growing as their own individual people. Do you enjoy being recognized? Sure. I think man doesn't work for bread alone. Fame is one of the satisfactions of success. And when people come up to you, of course, must, they must constantly come and accost you on the street indeed. Does it become at all hindersome or cumbersome or is it embarrassing or do you feel you, you know, a need to be polite and spend time and... Uh, depends. My, my usual reaction is uh, to accept it, uh, uh, you know, as a part of that, uh, as a part of my success and a part of the fame. And uh, indeed, if I had wanted to avoid the public image uh, and, and, the, and the fame, uh, that would have been relatively easy to do. I mean, there aren't that many people in my particular line of work that are that well known. Uh, and I'm always a little put off uh, by, indeed in some cases, some of my friends uh, who are in show business, who obviously, since they were very young, wanted to become successful in show business, wanted to become, in many cases, stars, and then resent or at least go through the motions of pretending to resent the, uh, you know, the kind of fandom and attention they get when they're in public. It can be bothersome sometimes, but when one is in that kind of a mood, it's a good idea to stay out of the public. And I, you know, I spend far more time uh, alone or with my immediate friends than I do out in, in public.
I understand the general practice of picking the Playboy playmates is that photographers submit pictures. Have you, over the years yourself, um, stopped a girl in the corner and discovered a Playboy playmate? No, I've never walked up to a girl on the street and suggested she become a playmate, though some of our photographers have. How do you feel about the Playboy copyists? Well, uh, I think that, uh, you know, if imitation is indeed the sincerest form of flattery, I'm the most sincerely flattered flattered uh, publisher of our time. Are there suits pending? There is a suit pending uh, in the Playgirl, uh, in the case of Playgirl, because of what we feel is an, a name confusion. How do you feel about the ripoff of artists by publishers and public alike? It's something that, of course, Playboy, I want to applaud the fact they've always played top dollar for top talent, but we increasingly see, the, see it happen, especially in New York, where publishers and art galleries and so forth are increasingly taking advantage of the artists and denying them proper funding and advances and indeed making it harder and harder for them to create and live. Well, because I am primarily, from my background, uh, a creative person, a person that was interested in writing and, and art, etc., rather than a business person, despite the business success, I'm very sympathetic with that problem. And indeed, because of the tradition with Esquire and some other magazines of not paying good money to writers over the years, I have very strong personal feelings about it and, uh, and vowed when Playboy began that if the magazine was successful, I was going to you know, make it as successful as I could for the other people that contributed. So I have always tried to uh, have Playboy pay top dollars for the material we use. What do you feel the visual impact of the magazine has played in the development of the masses' tastes? Well, because of the tremendous impact of the, uh, the Playmate and the girls in the magazine, a lot of the other things that Playboy's done have, uh, have been kind of lost in the shuffle, but I think that the graphic impact of the magazine, by that I mean the design and the artwork, probably has had more influence than any other, certainly any other single magazine in America uh, or in the world in, in, the, in the last generation. I think the magazine has had more influence on the appearance, the graphic appearance and design and art in magazines uh, than any other magazine around. I realize that Art Hall, of course, has a great deal to do with the magazine, and indeed, isn't it financially split down the middle? How do you mean? Is Art Paul a partner? Yes. No, no. I own approximately 75 percent of all of Playboy stock. But Arthur does have. Arthur was my very first employee, and he uh, is very well off today as a result of the association. He's independently wealthy. Barbie, do you have the Yacht magazine? Well, I think that probably says more about our hang-ups related to masturbation than it does about Playboy. Uh, you know, masturbation is a perfectly healthy, uh, or, you know, stage of human sexuality, and uh, if uh, Playboy is added to uh, the sexual fantasies of uh, the nation and world, that's probably a pretty good thing. Do you yourself masturbate? Sure, on occasion. What do you think the proper age for a person to uh, start to read Playboy is? Uh, well, the magazine is purposely uh, aimed at an adult audience because before Playboy, there was a great tendency to take the attitude that uh, um, magazines ought to be suited for all members of the family. And what that meant was the lowest common denominator. In other words, that meant suitable for children. And when they talked about family magazines or general interest magazines, they were talking about magazines really edited down to that level. So I think there is a virtue in oneself as an adult book. But I also think that uh, in the great majority of cases, uh, Assuming that the you know the child is otherwise emotionally stable and and uh, and healthy, that there is almost any age that uh, would probably benefit from the magazine. Are you talking about 16, 15, 14? I'm saying that I don't think there's any age that would be. In other words, I don't think a six-year-old or a ten-year-old would be hurt by the magazine. They'd be helped more than hurt because I think the magazine has essentially a healthy attitude towards sex life. I definitely agree. But on this basis, don't you feel that really? Why do you? Uh, exclusively an inch of ten. Hasn't it become more or less a magazine with something for everyone? Well, uh, I'm not sure it's got something for everyone, but without question, the magazine was called an entertainment book at the outset, and we continue to carry that line on the cover, but without question, the magazine now is a book not only of entertainment, but also edification and service. How old are you now? Forty-eight. We're not in color to see... Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> and Barbie, how old are you? Twenty-four. I'm always distracted by the beautiful green of your eyes. It's, I wish we were in color. <laughs> it all depends on what I'm wearing and where I am. Right now they're green because we're in a yellow room, but usually they're on a, a blue tone. 
but whatever they usually match what I'm wearing. Let me see. Hmm? You? <laughs> Mr. Hefner's eyes are brown. Uh, how tall are you? Uh, 5'11". And how much do you weigh? About 165. How did you lose your virginity? <laughs> In the usual way. Sexual intercourse. <laughs> was she older or younger? <laughs> was she older or younger? She's just about the same age. I was in college. Was it a pleasant experience? Sure. Um, if you were pushed from your Taurus suite, what would flash across your mind on the way down? I'm falling. <laughs> <laughs> Have you consciously surrounded yourself with the best of everything as far as material things and people for security reasons? I didn't quite understand that question. I, I understood it until you got to the security part. Uh, I have consciously surrounded myself with the things that please me. They're not always what other people consider to be the best of everything. But uh, I've made life as pleasant and comfortable for myself as I was able. What's your relationship with J. Paul Getty? Uh, well, he has been a... Uh, uh, he was a contributing editor uh, to the magazine for a number of years and wrote a series of articles for us. That's, that's the extent of it. Do you visit him when you go to England? No, I have visited him a couple of times. Uh, I haven't seen him for about three years. Did the two of you discuss your art collections? No, no. I don't remember what we did discuss the last time we saw each other. Is there indeed art that you purchase that does not appear in the magazine? Oh, yes, sure. I have a very nice, uh, if small, uh, uh, collection of contemporary art, most of it American. Franz Klein, de Kooning, Pollock. Have you ever considered enclosing a last, because of the four-month deadline, a, a last-minute uh, one-color black-and-white enclosure to keep the magazine uh, more influential and immediate in the day of instant uh, everything? Well, we try to do that to the degree that we're able. The front section of the magazine, uh, which is printed in a letterpress in the Playboy After Hours, which has the reviews and special sections, uh, uh, does have a later closing date. But it's you know it's, it's impossible, of course, to for a monthly magazine with its deadlines to uh, compete in that sense with with the daily newspapers or a weekly magazine. Are you planning any uh, further innovative formats that indeed might shock the uh, publishing world again? And if so, uh, what kind of precautions do you take? Are there spies? Are there spies? Uh, well, um, except for that last part of it, I, I, I are you planning any new change in format that would shock? the publishing world the way the original Playboy format did? No, though we do have a number of other uh, publishing ventures on the drawing board, uh, you know, that we're testing, and uh, but uh, we don't have any immediate uh, plans that I think is going to blow anybody's mind. Are you at all concerned with the industrial secrets of uh, your empire? You mean keeping them secret? There really aren't too many industrial secrets in my business. I think what we're doing is pretty... Uh, clear and obvious in the pages of the book every every month. Do you have a close rapport with your editors? Yes, uh, very good. Very good relationship with the editors. Have you relinquished any power as far as Playboy goes? Oh, yes, a lot. And it was one of the most difficult things for me because, uh, you know, it began as uh, really a, a one-man operation and uh, remains for me a very, you know, close personal extension of myself and my views on life. So one of the most difficult things, as, as the company grew, one of the most difficult things for me to learn, really, was the delegating of authority. But I've managed to do that in the last few years rather successfully. What percentage of the content of the magazine and its artwork do you see before it hits the stands? Relatively little now. We have uh, a monthly meeting in which we go over the general uh, contents of the forthcoming issues. Uh, beyond that, very little. What do you do day to day? What kind of day to day involvement do you have with the magazine? Well, you see, the company now is a good deal more than just a magazine. In other words, we're into film and TV production, we're into records, we're into, of course, we have the clubs and hotels, we have a wide variety and spectrum of uh, business operations, uh, both in America and around the world. So my meetings uh, are related to the various aspects of, of what we do. Uh, so I may go from, you know, a, a cartoon meeting one afternoon to a financial meeting the next. What does your daily day consist of? What, what time do you get up? Usually starts in the afternoon. Uh, two? About two o'clock on the average. And when you Maybe get up, do you, do you have breakfast? Or? No, not usually. I usually eat uh, la later day. in the day. One, one meal a day, usually late in the day. Well, yeah. once you get up, um, what do you do? Well, it depends. Uh, I, you know, I check out whatever. The first thing I do is uh, meet with uh, uh, my secretary and go over uh, you know, the day's business in terms of any notes that I may have for her, any notes that she may have for me. Uh, and then if I have 
meetings. They're usually set for, I would say, usually around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, if I'm in Los Angeles, and I split my time usually between Chicago and Los Angeles. If I'm in Los Angeles, uh, the first part of the day, you know, maybe devoted to uh, a little tennis or, you know, sunshine. Uh, and then into the meetings, and then an evening of of uh, other meetings, if that's what's on the agenda, or running, you know, uh, a new film or some games. What do you enjoy eating for dinner? Well, that depends. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and gravy. Okay. We'll never know. You can relive it. Particularly. Um, the most fabulous present that he's ever given me was a Tiffany lamp that was the dragon design with the, well, if you know anything about Tiffany's, it has a, a ragged edge of, of dragonflies, heads. Oh, I know hanging it. Hanging around the bottom. It's just exquisite. He's also given me a car. But, what uh, kind? BMW. A long time ago, he gave me a Maserati, but it was a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> even Maserati. Just the same, it was even a Maseratis Maserati. can be lemons. Hmm? So yeah, but the BMW, I just love. It's just, I love it. It's got velour seats, and it's just terribly, terribly elegant. That yeah. was the latest present. In turn, what's the most fabulous thing she's ever given you? Her love. <laughs> no. Oh. No. Oh, is it? <laughs> but how about that book? I think that's the, f the favorite book, you know, the favorite present that oh, I yes, ever gave. Yes, that was very nice. Yeah, she gave and me. Do you know? Probably the nicest gift she ever gave me was uh, something for, her, I guess that was anniversary a year ago. Last year, yeah. Yeah, she... She found an old turn-of-the-century album and had it recovered and then had pictures of our relationship to the first five years done up in uh, the old sepia tinted tone. sepia tone, like the old-fashioned pictures. And it became a lovely picture. album of our relationship. Little holes for the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, you were saying that uh, Hef's favorite food was fried chicken. Do you ever make it for him yourself? No, I don't. I don't particularly like to cook for Hef because the <laughs> kinds of foods that he likes are the kinds that take hours to cook, but you don't really have to work that hard with them. I mean, fried chicken, you just kind of put in the batter and fry it. But what I do do is when I find something that he likes, I, try to, I do teach the cooks how to do it so that they can make it for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as far as, uh, well, like I've... Uh, he likes pot roast and pork chop sandwiches. You know, it's very things Midwestern that are very American. Easy. See, like my folks were farm people from Nebraska, and uh, you know, one acquires the tastes uh, very much related to the kind of childhood that you. So I'm a I'm a meat and potatoes man. Do you have any interest at all in the in or organic food in the um, using little pesticides and sprays on the things that you eat? No. <laughs> <laughs> How did you two meet? Uh, we were doing, I was doing a uh, syndicated TV show, uh, Playboy After Dark, uh, 1958, and Barbie had just come down from Sacramento. 1958? 68. 68. Did I say 58? 68. Uh -huh. 50, 58, that was uh, Playboy's Penthouse. <laughs> you were uh, Another really syndicated TV show. Uh, and, um, and she was, uh, uh, just down from Sacramento, uh, at, uh, going to school at UCLA and doing some modeling on the side. And she was one of the girls uh, on the show, and we met on the set of the show. Was it instant love and romance? It was pretty quick. I, uh, I uh, was very taken by her when I first met her and uh, uh, asked her to join a group. I already had a date for that evening, but uh, I didn't want to let her get away, so I, I invited her to join the group. And uh, thereafter, we started dating. It took a little while for us to, for her to make sure that uh, she wanted to get serious with a guy who was quite a few years older than she was, but uh, it had a happy ending. Although very beautiful in all of your pictures, I must say that you are infinitely more beautiful in person than that your real beauty must be captured uh, and people must go to see you, really. It's the oh, truth. Well, talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yes. <laughs> Do you have a favorite pipe? They're all the same. I have made up special by Dunhill. It's a special pipe that uh, it's a combination bowl of one pipe with a, with a uh, stem that's not quite so flared. And you have to light it every ten minutes. 
I don't know. No. Five, it, right? You really hit five, yeah. Do you remember when you first put pipe to mouth? I remember roughly when it was. It was uh, sometime in the uh, in the late 50s. Yeah. It was is, around 58, I think. Is there a move towards more graphic covers of magazines, Playboy? How do you mean more graphic covers? Uh, less pictorial and more uh, drawn. No, uh, if you look through the uh, 20 plus years of, uh, of Playboy's history, you'll find that uh, uh, there is a variety of, uh, of graphic techniques, collages and uh, artwork, etc. in combination with photography, you know, has really been the rule with the magazine over the years. So Caras are never shown on the cover. Nipples are sometimes, uh, and the, you know, the... Uh, extent of exposure inside the magazine and on the cover is really dictated by uh, society's changing mores and what's acceptable. And, you know, there are really no problems in terms of uh, even frontal nudity uh, on the covers of publications in Europe, but the same thing isn't true here in America. If we had complete frontal nudity on the magazine, there would be a great many outlets, particularly supermarkets and drugstores, that we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to be uh, sold at. Are you concerned with society's changing mores or your changing mores and what you feel uh, society should be moving towards? I'm concerned with both. I think there's a certain responsibility when you're publishing a magazine that has a circulation of six and a half million. And uh, very obviously the magazine has continually both reflected and also influenced uh, the changes in, in uh, social and moral values. And I think that's a good thing. What is your ideal? What would your ideal day consist of if there could be even more than 24 hours in the day? Uh, what would the ideal day encompass for you? Well, it wouldn't be the same. I don't think there is an, an ideal day. It depends on, uh, you know, what kind of mood you're in and what you want to do. A little uh, volleyball, a little backgammon. A lot of lying around in bed. <laughs> and mostly, it's probably my ideal day would be spent in bed, I think. How many hours of the day do you and Barbie stay together? Well, it depends. I mean, if she's, if she's, you know, she's working now, so she's away uh, about half the time. Uh, we're together most of the time when. Uh, when I'm when when, when I'm in home. Los Angeles and you're in Los Angeles, we're together all day. Yeah, unless there's some, unless there's something that one or one. I of don't us go has. out when he's when we're together when he's in town, unless I absolutely have to. I mean, she may, may have something she has to do, a you know, business appointment but or something. Or I don't I make have. a point of going out to lunch with my girlfriends when Hef is in town. Are you jealous when you're separated? Uh, what's he doing? All those girls trying to take my place. And no, uh, do you think about things like that? I, I feel very secure in the relationship. She is, I think, as a matter of fact, the most secure girl that I probably have ever cared about. And I think that's one of the reasons that, uh, that I care as much for her as I do. She's very together, and I like that. What about you? Are you ever jealous? Oh, she's out What's there something? performing in front of all those people and No, no, not in that. I'm I, I, uh, getting a great deal of pleasure and satisfaction out of her uh, career. And uh, she's a very straight lady, so she doesn't give me any undue cause for concern. Do you believe in reincarnation? No. Do you believe in God? No. Not, not the God we invented, I don't know. Do you believe in some sort of any kind of superpower or a destiny or fate, or is it all just what we make it? Well, I think it's largely what we make it, but obviously there's a good deal more to our existence than that. And, and you know, beyond a certain point, a person would be um, a fool to suggest that he really knows the answers, and I don't. In other words, I don't think... Uh, I have no idea what we're doing here. But we're here, and that wasn't just man's invention. I mean, there's something beyond all this, and whether it has a purpose or a point or a grander plan, uh, I don't know. No one knows. Those that pretend to know um, strike me as being rather pompous. Do you believe in ESP and... Uh, sure, certain aspects of it. I think... Uh, I think... I, I was very interested in parapsychology. Well, my... my uh, my major in college was psychology, and, and I was very interested in parapsychology and ESP and this kind of thing when I was a kid. Uh, but there's certain aspects of ESP that I don't think fit into the, into the natural as we know it. In other words, I think precognition, uh, you know, the ability to, to tell the future, etc., is is inconsistent with the fact that no one knows what's coming around the corner tomorrow. But uh, if you're talking about 
you know, mental telepathy and, uh, you know, some of the other aspects of ESP, who can tell? Quite possible. Do you believe in you, Ellis? That's an interesting question. I, I think, I think there is, that it's mathematically probable that we are certainly not the only uh, life form uh, in the entire universe, so um, there may indeed be other life, and there may be, and probably is, intelligent life someplace out there. So the possibility of visitations is certainly possible. I think that certainly the majority of UFO sightings are, are uh, explained away in other ways, however. Would you like to go to the moon? It's, I think it'll probably be possible. How do you feel about that trip? I think it might be interesting. Barbara, you want to go along for the ride? Oh, I wouldn't oh, go right. without her. Sure. <laughs> sure. Are there a lot of girls who you want to appear in the magazine that refuse? There are some, sure. Mm -hmm. Would you I'm, pay? We still live in a time in which, uh, you know, that uh, nudity is semi-respectable. So, uh, and in some quarters for that and other reasons, Playboy is in some quarters semi-respectable. So, uh, you know, some people are for us and some are against us. There are a lot of girls, of course, who are models, indeed high fashion models. And I know that Miss November, B.B. Buell, is, uh, is almost sort of breaking down certain barriers by saying, I can appear nude in Playboy magazine and yet I can appear on the cover of Vogue and the advertisers and the uh, clients shouldn't be concerned at all. Do you think that it's a positive or negative uh, a factor in the high models or actress's life to appear in Playboy magazine? Well, I think it's positive. I also think that Playboy has had a dramatic effect upon the attitudes towards the female body in women's magazines and that's not generally recognized. When I started publishing Playboy, and for about the first 10 years, Vogue and Harper's Bazaar and the rest were really hung up in a very anti-sexual attitude towards the female body. There were no uh, nudes in the magazine, in either ads or editorially. Uh, I remember in the, in the 50s that uh, even young girls thought it was improper to go out uh, uh, on a special evening without wearing a girdle because the human body wasn't supposed to wiggle. That was uh, crude and tasteless, and I think that's a sick and foolish attitude. Uh, the women's magazines fought the bikini in America for about 10 years. There was about a 10-year delay between the acceptance of the bikini in Europe and its acceptance in America. And the women's magazines had a lot to do with that. And so I'm more than a little pleased by the fact that uh, we won that as well as a lot of other battles. Barbie, what are you wearing on the beach this year? A bikini. <laughs> the string? No, I, well, I, d I don't know. I mean, I just wear uh, a very thin material. Um, I think the smaller that the bikini is, the more flattering. I don't particularly care for the straight across look because I don't think it is terribly flattering. But I think that the, uh, the style that's been in for the last four or five years um, with thin materials is very attractive on girls. And I think most men agree with that. Um, I like the very natural look in, in women's clothing that they're affecting now. I'm really glad they got out of that built-in bra in the two-piece, that was just the worst. <laughs> you know, and now it's fine if, um, if the nipple sh peeks through, you know, as long as, you know, if, it's, if the color doesn't come through, I think it's nice if, you know, you can just it notice nice a little too. bit of, you like that too. <laughs> I like that too. Do you like it when she wears a see-through blouse out in public? Uh, <laughs> yeah, though I went through a little period, quite, quite frankly, uh, where- uh, Went through, you still don't like it. Sure I, mean, I do. Yeah, doesn't bother me now. Does it? Yeah. You'll have to check out some of these TV interviews and discover oh, yes. where I'm really at. Uh, you just put it down there if you want to. Thank you. Now, wait a second. Uh, in other words, I, uh, I like <laughs> sexy fashions, but there was a period, uh, and I admit it, when um, Tell I had us about mixed it. emotions about uh, some of the sexy fashions she was wearing. Matter of fact, I remember that we came to New York uh -huh. to see the uh, original uh, Muhammad Ali oh, yeah. uh, Joe Frazier fight. And she wore a, the, the hot pants were in then. She wore a very cute hot pants outfit with a very see-through uh, blouse uh, and suspenders on the hot pants. And I was very concerned that the suspenders stay in the right place. <laughs> so concerned that, that, that you kept replacing it yourself? Or? Oh, you'd still be concerned. Now, just well, the other day, when I left At, at any rate, you've York, confirmed that she thinks I would still be concerned. When I came to New York, I was wearing a, an old scarf made into a blouse. 
Yeah. And you felt that it was much too s severe. Was I going with you? No. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Aha, uh -huh, if I'm a going with you. A I little different. Sure. Have what on the beach this summer? <laughs> well, neither of us are going to be on the beach this summer. We're going to be around our pool uh, at Playboy Mansion West. Uh, or a bathing suit. And what is the bathing suit that you wear? Well, actually, it's a Gatsby's bathing suit. It's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a sort of a, you know, it's a two-piece. It's not a bikini. It's no, not a bikini. bikini. No, I, to be frank, I don't, really, uh, uh, I don't find the, the male bikini that, that attractive. No. Thank no, God. Not. not on a guy in the middle of the 40s, anyway. How do you feel about other magazines? You read other magazines? Respect other magazines? Yeah. You read other magazines? Oh, in Newsweek, I recovered a cover every week, uh, Esquire. Uh, those are probably big uh, Lately, we've witnessed the astronomical yeah, yeah, increase in the price of uh, Newsweek and, and Time Magazine, 60 cents, 75 cents. Will Playboy be taking that same trip? Playboy just took that step a couple of months ago. We went to a buck and a quarter. And I'm afraid that uh, that move has been dictated by a dramatic increase in just the last year. A lot of people probably aren't aware of the really dramatic increase that's taken place, both in the production costs and also the increased paper. cost in pay Staggering. Just Boston don't paper. cut down the number of pages. No, we we'll continue to deliver. Well, that's it. Seems to be we. we uh, there's been no drop at all in circulation. We're happy to report, and there is a uh, Playboy had many years the highest ratio of editorial content to advertising of any major magazine, and we keep plan on keeping it that way. Would you pay a million dollars for a nude? I can't think of anybody offhand that I would pay a million dollars for. No. No. Not that much. Not that valuable. Are there any uh, famous people or socialites you'd like to see naked in the magazine? Hundreds, probably. Mm -hmm. All together. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who most would you like to see nude? Right now, here? Uh, no, in terms of, uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, the world. Well, I think that the direct correlation between uh, that and whatever, uh, you know, the general public would like to see nude, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the current sex uh, symbols kind of come and go. Um, I think we're kind of, in, I, I recall Welsh, I guess, is still uh, uh, the lady that most men would like to see. Uh, maybe Robert Redford for the girls. Huh? Will you be printing uh, male nudes in Playboy at some point? Yes. Together, Rocco Welch and, uh, <laughs> and Robert Redford, that'd be very nice. Sounds like a very good idea. Do you think in terms of what the public would like to see or what in terms you'd like to see and then assume that the public would like to see what you'd like to see? Well, I edit the magazine for myself and there is a high correlation and has been over the years of, of the, for example, with the playmates of the girls that I thought were most attractive and the ones that the uh, readers reacted to. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a combination both of projecting my own particular interests and also... Uh, Part of editing a magazine, obviously, is to try and not make it too personal. You have to uh, keep in uh, tune with uh, with your audience. Are there orgies at the Chicago Mansion? I don't know. I haven't <laughs> been there in a few weeks. Do things Probably. happen when you're when you're away. Uh, I hope so. What really happened when the Rolling Stones visited? It was wonderful. <laughs> what was the highlight? It was there. I heard it was got pretty wild, pretty rough, pretty raucous. Well, it never got out of hand. We had a good time. But he wound up in the Roman bath one evening. That was a lot of fun. And uh, one evening they did a, the last evening that they were there, they did a little, uh, a little show for us. That was good, you know, musical show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do you feel about your treatment in the press? Has there been anything they've continuously ignored or? Well, I think that to some extent um, there has been a certain amount of understandable um, jealousy, I think, uh, because I'm not part of the New York Eastern Establishment, and I think that we have fared less well, and as a matter of fact, I, I know in some instances have lost some uh, major magazine stuff because uh, the reporters that came and, and did the research and wrote the original stories were too favorably impressed so that their editors back in New York killed the stories. Uh, but by and large, I think, uh, I think the press, considering the fact that Playboy's success is so rooted in things that have been traditionally controversial in our society, I think we've fared pretty well. I'm very impressed and very envious, but I find that it only spurs me on and uh, sort of like it's an ideal that one works to. It's a good, healthy attitude. Why don't you move to New York City? 
because I found a better place. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about sexual toys, dildos, ticklers, body rubs? Whatever turns you on. Do you have any fetishes yourself? Uh, the human body turns me on quite a bit. But, uh, but no real fetishes that uh, are worthy of the name. Is sex wide open in your personal life? Yeah, pretty wide open. I'm, uh, you know, boy's father to the man, so to some degree I'm, uh, I'm uh, influenced, obviously, by my own uh, upbringing. But uh, with that as the, uh, as a obvious consideration, I think I'm relatively uh, unhung up. Are there any plans for a Hugh Hefner Jr. to take over the empire? Well, I have a son and daughter, uh, but no That's plan. That's moving into position? No, not in terms of taking over the empire, no. Eventually, the majority of the stock is going to be uh, turned over to the Playboy Foundation, which will be working for the various social ends and, and uh, you know, working with some of the social problems that, we, that we're working with now and that are not so popular in some other quarters and don't get monies from, from some of the other foundations. Such as? Such as uh, some of our sexual hang-ups, our problems in terms of drug abuse, uh, racial problems, problems related to uh, prison reform, some of the things that are not so popular. Would you like to have Hef's child? Sure. Right now? Here? I don't think either of us are ready for children right now, though. I'd say that I would like to have kids before I'm approximately 30, because chances of having kids go down after 30. But uh, if I was going to have anybody's child, I would say that his would be about the perfect child to have. I certainly hope so. Would you be interested in having more children? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Do you miss your TV show, and what happened to it? No, because I, you know, I did, for I, a it. I did it for a specific reason, and it took a lot of time. Uh, and it was really a first step towards getting me out of the Chicago house, getting myself back into shape. And, uh, and, you know, a first step towards getting into uh, TV and, and film production. We are now very much involved in both, but uh, you know, I'm really better at, uh, at the behind-the-scenes thing than, than as a performer. I uh, like the fact that it doesn't take as much time. Some time ago, we've caused quite, in fact, we still have causing quite a scandal in by displaying nudity and profanity and sex on television in, in good taste and humor and so forth and so on. How do you feel about that? I think that uh, in a supposedly free society, we ought to get over our sexual hang on and uh, free expression of uh, sexual views and values and, and images. I've always felt that it says something very sad about our society, that our notion of is related to acts of love rather than acts of hate and violence and killing. Then you approve of opening up television? You know, um, this is one of the best interviews that uh, we don't usually get the interview on TV. Uh, did you get that? Now, how many more minutes do I have? Five minutes. It's okay. We'll give you a few seconds to light your pipe. Uh, right. Barbie, you don't like the pipe for him? No. <laughs> my girlfriend, not my handmaid. Oh. Do you light her sets? He doesn't smoke. smoke. Do you I'm open doors for Well, he certainly does. He opens yes. car doors, just about in. He's well, he brought up to be a gentleman. Of course, I think it's well. I can yeah. see that and tell. Really? <laughs> when I'm lost for words, it's because I'm distracted uh, a little bit over there. But can you tell me this? Uh, I know that you've been fighting very hard for the legalization of marijuana. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little, about, a little bit about the fight and uh, the direction you're going into. Well, we are the primary uh, uh, source of funding for normal. Uh, you know, it's a uh, group in America that uh, in decrimising. Uh, the use of marijuana, and, and it was down to something very, uh, very simple. I, uh, I'm opposed to all most crimes. I think that uh, uh, attempt to solve some of the social problems uh, in society that might better be solved by uh, medical and, and psychological means. And trying to solve them all with courts and a night and you know, with cop on the beat is, is uh, you know, it's just a an error, and I think we're going through the same kind of thing that we went through with prohibition. It's, it's more serious than that because on the period of prohibition, you know, it was kind of a joke to the great American public. What you have with marijuana really uh, uh, a something that is, is splitting society. I mean, it's almost, it's almost as much of a, causing as much of a schism as Vietnam we're used to and as uh, for a while long hair used to. 
uh, it's turned into a kind of thing where you've got the, the young people on one side of the, of the thing and, and the older people on the other side. And unfortunately, the older people are the people that want the judges. And so, you, you know, you, you want uh, a lot of young people being thrown in prison for things that uh, majority of today. And I think it's <laughs> very sad, very consistent with the concept of a free democratic society. I think we're witnessing more of a constant transition, old and young, as far as I think that, that marijuana is no longer indulged by just the young. And in fact, Timothy Leary could hardly be called young. And he's no. uh, a little atypical, however, Timothy. Uh, no, I think that's true. I think that we are moving into a period where, uh, you know, where, where it will no longer be uh, uh, illegal. I'm sure that we're going to reach a point eventually where, where uh, the use of marijuana will, you know, will not be uh, a crime. How can it continue to be? It's not as harmful as either alcohol or tobacco. That's it. You heard it from Hugh Hefner. How do you feel about your own personal use of marijuana? Well, I'm not going to sit here and, and uh, discuss anything I might do that's the law. But uh, it isn't my own. I'm, as I said, my feeling about it is really the same as uh, as my attitude towards prohibition. And I'm a I'm not a, a serious drinker. I'm you know a light social drinker. Uh, in other words, my views on these various problems uh, are are a little more abstract than personal use. What do you like to drink? I'm usually a uh, Jack Daniels man. Barbie. Oh, I like anything sweet. I don't like hard liquor, but I think I, I invented a strawberry daiquiri about six years ago that is still my favorite. It's a frozen strawberry daiquiri. I also make peach daiquiris and any kind of fruit that just happens to be around the house. It tastes good. Did you give us that Barbie Benton recipe? What, for a strawberry daiquiri? I use crushed. I like it a little stronger. You add a little more rum. But you also have to add a little more ice because the rum melts the ice. And I like it very, very thick. And by the time I get finished with it, I'll have to be the consistency of a milkshake and the, with the flavor of a strawberry milkshake with a little juice in it, you know? And it's really delicious, really. It's become very and, popular uh, with a number of our friends. Yeah. I've made it a standard so that any time anybody wants one at the house, it's probably the most sought-after drink by the women. But I also like things like um, Bloody Marys and... Uh, screwdrivers, but I don't like straight martinis or anything like that. I've tried to hire a taste for scotch, mm -hmm. but I, I only do it just to be drinking scotch if that's the only thing that has to be available. But I really don't like the taste of liquor that much unless it's something really good like rum that tastes good. you feel about drugs? About drugs? The same view, uh, at least grass as it is. Um, I don't think that hard drug good, and I don't think that they should be legalized, but I think that marijuana is completely harmless, or almost completely harmless, but give it an en enough um, research. But I think that it's certainly not a little... That's true for why we keep it illegal, is that notion that eventually made that it's hurt harmful. Yeah. It's really a fascinating I mean, notion. Well, marijuana. Well, you know, eventually it may all fall apart in some court. The legislators are not very good at, at uh, coming through aggressive uh, laws that uh, any part of their constituency is, uh, is opposed to. So it may turn out to be the same kind of thing happened to the laws. Of course, common sexual practices uh, that are engaged in by the majority of adult people are still felonies in most states in the Union. The legislators have only gotten around to decriminalizing a lot of this activity in just three or four. But, uh, for all practical purposes, they exist they no longer exist in, in reality. I think the same occur with uh, marijuana. We may be where the courts will say uh, cruel and that it's unconstitutional. It becomes cruel and uh, uh, improper uh, penalties to send to prison for something that literally doesn't hurt them. Couldn't be agree more. Beyond in terms of more serious drugs, and I think that more serious drugs are a serious problem. In but I don't think we take a single step closer to the solution to that problem going the people using the drugs into prison. Thank you. You cannot solve every social problem in with there are some problems that are, uh, you know, of a social and medical nature that have in a social and, and medical way. I think if more wise and responsible members of the community like would take this, not only privately but publicly, we'd find a, a faster route to some I agree with that, that my own public position on it has been, you know, has from position on it has been made public and indeed uh, she had a uh, fundraising for Nola at the house uh, on the West Coast that I think got some publicity here just uh, last weekend. Are you aware at all of the work of uh, the house? Uh, not by name, no. 
I don't think that they should be legalized, but I think that marijuana is completely harmless, or almost completely harmless. They haven't given it an, enough um, research, you know. But I think that it's certainly not as harmful as... That's a fascinating attitude for why we keep it uh, illegal, incidentally, you know, the notion that eventually we may find that it's hurt harmful. Yeah. It's really a fascinating I mean, notion. Meanwhile, you know, we, we advertise and promote products that, uh, you know, that destroy your liver and uh, cause cancer and heart disease and all kinds of things. It's, it's bizarre. What kind of a timetable do you think we're going to be on for the legalization of marijuana? Well, you know, eventually it may all fall apart in court. The legislators are not very good at, at uh, coming through with progressive uh, laws to any part of their constituency is, uh, is opposed to. So it may turn out to be the same kind of thing as happened to the sex laws, was common sexual practices uh, that are engaged in by the majority of adult people are still felonies in most states in the Union. The legislators have only gone to uh, decriminalizing a lot of this activity in just three or four states. But uh, for all practical, they exist on the books, but they no longer exist in reality. I think the same thing may occur with, uh, with marijuana. We may reach the point where the courts will say uh, that it's cruel, you know, it's, that it's unconstitutional, that it becomes cruel and uh, uh, improper uh, penalty and people to prison for something that literally doesn't hurt them. Uh, that Couldn't be, agree more. Beyond that, of course, you have the additional problem in terms of more serious drugs, and I think that more serious drugs are a serious problem in society, but I don't think we take a single step closer to the solution to that problem by throwing the people who are using the drugs into prison. In other words, I think you, you cannot solve every social problem in society with the police. There are some problems that are, uh, you know, of a social and medical nature that have to be solved in a social and, and medical way. I think if more wise and responsible members of the community like your sickest position, not only privately but publicly, we'd find a, a faster route to some. I agree with that. That's why my own public position on it has been, just for my own position on it, has been made public and why indeed, uh, well, we just had a uh, fundraising for Normal uh, at the house uh, on the West Coast that I think got some publicity here just uh, last weekend. Are you aware at all of the work of uh, Phoenix House? Uh, not by name, no. Uh, Phoenix no. House is a uh, self-help program for yeah, drug addicts uh, in New York, and it's, uh, it's a fabulous program that's um, all over the street, especially here in New York, that's supported by a lot of thinking people. I wouldn't be surprised to find that, although I'm personally familiar with the work they're doing, they were probably involved in helping to fund them. Did you actually visualize at one time in the past your present circumstances? No. When I started the magazine, all I wanted to do was edit a magazine that I could personally identify with, and I had no idea at all what was coming. Do you think it's more difficult now to start a magazine than it was then? No, no. I think there, the general notion that the period of opportunity in America is largely behind us is untrue. And I think that there's, uh, th there are great opportunities for people in, uh, in a wide spectrum of, of uh, areas of endeavor to, to make it and make it very big if, you know, if they come up with the right idea and, and work at it. Well, what, what's the future holding for you? I mean, you must have all sorts of ideas and constant uh, new goals, and what are you thinking about? That's, what, do you, what do you want to happen next? Well, I've gone through kind of a transitional period. Uh, the first 10 or 15 years of my life, of, uh, of my, my, uh, of my uh, 20 years with Playboy, were really devoted to uh, building the magazine and the company and, um, and getting a tremendous pleasure and satisfaction out of that. It has been a little more difficult for me to readjust to enjoying some of what I've built. And re I've really been, you know, uh, spending a certain amount of time in, the, in more recent years to that. And I take a lot of pride and pleasure in being able to have accomplished that as well. Because it's one thing to do it, it's another thing to be able to get satisfaction out of what you've accomplished and you know get real pleasure out of that and I'm I'm doing that now what kind of clothes do you personally like to wear casual casual around the house I'm uh, as often as not I'm wearing pajamas and casual shirt and, and pants things I'm I like very much the fact that uh, the necktie is no longer required uh, Give respect to you I think that's very classy and I don't want to show any disrespect by the fact that I didn't. So. Not at all. Just, uh, very casual. Is there any kind of favorite fabric? Do you prefer silk or cashmere or...? Anything very soft and, and loose and comfortable, yeah. 
Barbie, what about you? What kind of favorite fabrics do you have? I think I tend to go with chiffons, but in my... In recent years, I've gotten very funky with my material. I mean, this is probably an old uh, curtain, but it's made in France by a very well-known designer named Vicky Teal, and I think that uh, I tend to go with more of a style rather than a material. And I nothing itches me. Like, Hef doesn't like to wear wool without something under it, but I, I don't get itchy by things. So I don't think that the material is that important, but I do like soft flow over goods generally. leather <laughs> chain mail yes <laughs> I like feminine materials goes with generally. the whips you know flowers <laughs> oh you think that's good john you should hear some of the earlier part <laughs> what kind of direction do you find your career taking uh, you know it, you know you you've decided to be you are a singer you intend to take it to the all the way to the top? Uh, I'll take it as far as it will take me. If if I find that nobody is w watching me anymore, then I, you know, I may may as well forget the whole thing. But as long as people will continue to come to my shows, um, and as long as my show is growing, I think I'll just stay with what I've got. I'm doing country pop, and. Even though people aren't that big on country music in New York, I find that everybody enjoys the show, and they walk out not feeling disappointed, I think. A lot of people come to see me not knowing that I even sing. You know, they... <laughs> curiosity they, thing. Yeah, I think I am a curiosity factor. And I would like to be recognized as a singer, because I did work very hard to become a singer. She does a very good show. And Thanks. No, you do. Waylon Jennings was the first, I think, to make me interested in country uh, rock, and I'm sure that you're going to be the first to make me interested in country pop. So I'm looking forward to catching the show at the, the Playboy Club, and uh, whenever you come to town, which I hope you'll do more often. Do you find that it all has been a, uh, a detriment, or do you resent at all the fact that people come to look at you as a curiosity, the fact that you're Hugh Hefner's girlfriend? No, I don't resent it at all. I think that one thing that I owe to Playboy and to Hef is the fact that I was able to bypass the first part of my career. Uh, it is very unnormal for a person to be able to go into Las Vegas and work a, a large showroom uh, on their second time out. I had only worked for two weeks when I played Las Vegas. And that I couldn't have done, no, no way, no how, had I not had a name of some sort that they got on a marquee to draw people in. So I understand, you know, I think that is a, a pro in my career in singing. I can't say that it helped me that much in acting because uh, usually they ask me to do the nude parts. But in singing, I think that there's so much curiosity that that brings people into the show. They aren't expecting anything, and then when they walk out, they feel like they've gotten their, their money's worth. So... Huge reaction is pleasant surprise, because I think that, you know, there's, there is the tendency to assume that maybe she's only up there because she is my girlfriend. The simple truth of the matter is she's a very talented lady and puts on a very good show, so... Uh, both the general public that has seen her and also the critics have responded in that way. She's been getting very good reviews. She's only been working in the business now for, uh, for really about what amounts to about six, eight months. And uh, the reaction has been extremely good. Do you give a lot of personal attention and advice towards your career? Are you taking a terribly active interest in uh, maybe the songs she sings and the way she presents herself and what she no, wears involved. and where she wears? I'm involved yeah. and interested in it, but just uh, to the extent that, uh, not in any kind of Svengali way, because she really, she really did the thing on her own. When she started out uh, uh, and started talking seriously about singing professionally, I tried to discourage her because I really, she was a very talented actress and she was going to be dissipating and kind of wasting her her energies by going off in this other direction. And she proved me wrong. You know, she just stuck at it uh, with, the, with the lessons and, you know, learned to play the guitar and, and uh, put it together herself. Do you play any really musical instruments yourself? Just the organ. Oh, yeah. I don't know you. Oh, okay. No. I will let silence pass here for a few moments. <laughs> what do you want, all straight lines? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, here we are. Candid I, conversation I with Hugh Hefner. <laughs> you started to remember that. <laughs> You're going to finish it, I can tell by that as well. 
Do you travel a great deal? I know that was some years ago that I spotted the boat that you'd rented off the Greek islands, and uh, of course the big black Playboy bunny is seen in many of the uh, most exotic and erotic places of the world. And how do you feel? What part does travel play in your life? Well, we, we do a certain amount of traveling, and I've been doing a little more uh, traveling the last few months uh, around the country because, uh, you know, I visit Barbie when she's playing in the hinterlands. Uh, we haven't taken a major trip in a couple of years. That's partly because I got the, uh, uh, the West Coast house about three years ago, and it is literally for us a Shangri-La. It is located in the heart of Los Angeles, about a block and a half from Sunset Boulevard, but you would think you were in the middle of Europe or on some other planet somewhere. It's really so much a Shangri-La that rumor has it that when you leave the grounds, you start aging visibly. It's a very <laughs> lovely, lovely place. And, you know, the kind of spot, the kind of garden spot that you would travel the world to try to find. So uh, we've been enjoying that recently. We have wild birds and animals walking the grounds, and it's really a... You work very closely with the landscape architects and the interior designers, and... Uh... I'm very graphically oriented. Tell us, what are some of your favorite features of your house? Well, let's see. There's the jacuzzi. See my friend John over there is immediately lip-syncing me there on jacuzzi. Uh, we have a very uh, remarkable uh, backyard, a combination of waterfalls and a, a pool done in a very natural way and, and a variety of fish and birds and monkeys and things there. Oh, and and a, and a and the uh, uh, the center of the of the pool is a a cave that you can swim into, either under a rock shelf from the deep end or walk through in a waterfall. And that uh, cave includes a very romantic jacuzzi area that, for some reason, has proved and proven to be the most popular area in the grounds. That's my favorite spot. Have you named some of the animals on the grounds? Oh, yes, oh they all have names, sure. Such as? Well, th we name everything with alliteration. The macaws are oh, Merkin, <laughs> Merlin, Macbeth, Marvin, named after my father. Uh, uh, we also Lambert have is a Lambert llama. Lambert is a llama, yeah. We have it's dogs. tradition of Disney, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. We have two dogs that are sheep dogs named Dog and Little Dog, also known as Papa Dog and Mama Dog. And, um... Excuse me. I'm going <laughs> to light you. Well, we've got crown cranes running around the property, and flamingos, loads of, well, we've got, hmm, just about any kind of animal that is legal, and many that aren't. A raccoon have, named oh, a quell. Oh, yes. Oh, and the monkeys are darling. Oh. Are there any possessions you don't yet possess that you're working on possessing or want to possess or dream to possess? <laughs> you got a wild animal. <laughs> yeah, this really wild animal called Barbie. Uh, no, I don't, no, not really, no. But I don't think that much in terms of material things. I mean, you know, the, the material things, I used to think about money back when I was poor. You know, I think that, I don't think that money is very important, but you can only say that when you've got it. When you don't have it, it's very important. When you have to worry about where it's coming from next week, I mean, it's very important. It, then you spend too much time thinking about money. The nice thing is in my life now that I will never have to think about money again. I don't have to worry about what it costs to buy something or what it costs to do whatever I'm doing. Do you personally carry money or is it taken care of by AIDS, checks? Care and, by AIDS. Uh, money never sees the inside of your pocket? Very rarely. Do you sign your own checks? Some. Do you ask the price of things when you go in to say Tiffany's or Cartier's or Winston? I mean, it can get a little crazy. If I'm buying something a little crazy for my lady, then I ask the price. Otherwise, I don't. The things I buy for myself are, are crazy, so I don't have to ask the price. <laughs> Just nice, quiet things like DC-9s. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, you know, when you went to Greece, you rented a boat. Yeah. Because you said you don't have a boat. Do you want a boat? Not particularly. I don't swim. How I, do you get I into that I'm waterfall? Well, I go in from the shallow end. I hope you don't drown in your jacuzzi. I do, too hope that. I don't think there's much chance. What's the last book that you read? The Lenny. Oh, Lenny. Mm -hmm. Lenny. And uh, the last movie that you saw? Uh, a lovely pan of praise to the city <laughs> called Death Wish. 
Charles Bronson. We ran at the house two days ago. You are, in the, of course, producing films yourself, and uh, is there some project coming up, some film that we can look forward to? Yes, our next film will be out uh, in the early fall, called The Crazy World of Julius Bruder, starring Timothy Bottoms. It's going to be a very good film. And the next production after that, which begins, uh, will start shooting in the, in the fall, is uh, Championship Season, which won... The play? Mm-hmm. Won a Tony Award and uh, Pulitzer Prize last year. Is there any plan for Barbie to combine her acting and musical talents by appearing in one of the films? We're looking for some suitable projects, yeah. She's had a couple of small parts in some things we've done uh, for television. And, uh, yes, I'd like to find something good for her. Mm -hmm. How badly do you want to be a star, Bobby? A bigger star, a phenomenal super, superstar? Well, I don't know if star is the word. I would like to feel that I've um, done something with four years of acting lessons. I worked. I went to acting lessons twice a week, and I had to memorize lines every day and learn how to do those things very well and and I feel that uh, if I don't do any acting in my life it won't have been wasted because I do get to act on stage I, I can encompass what I've learned in the acting lessons in my singing and therefore I don't feel like it's been wasted but I would like to do some some serious roles and make use of some talent that might be there what about you would you appear in your films sure. no it's possible to if walk, you could walk play through. Yourself. Sure. Do you I hope? continue to do that kind of thing every now and again in, in films and television. I mean, you know, I'm asked by various people to do little parts. Do you, you make, make home them? movies? Sometimes. Are you intrigued by tape? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So I have quite, a, quite, quite an extensive film and tape collection. Of? What are some of your favorite home movies or tapes of? Uh, movies are very high on the list. Horror movies, I understand. You're uh, 